Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for watching my videos and for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. The first item I have today <clears throat> is an article by Peter Sweden called Exposing the WEF Agenda. That's the World Economic Forum Agenda. And I'll put a link for that in the description so that you can read it. The second thing I have is International Freedom Movement to Protest World Health Organization Pandemic Treaty. I think I talked about this yesterday or the day before, but I wanted to give you some more on it because the news is popping up about it. Thousands of people from Europe, the United States, Japan, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand say they plan to descend on the United Nations on June 1st to declare independence from global institutions such as the World Health Organization and World Economic Forum while celebrating cultural and individual sovereignty. <coughs> Excuse me. June 1st marks the last day of the World Health Assembly as WHO members states WHO member states look to vote on the controversial pandemic treaty and amendments to international health regulations. The mobilization is organized by a coalition of groups and people representing farmers, truckers, business owners, firefighters, first responders, and families, and those canceled during COVID-19. So it's, it's quite a combination of people that will be at this thing. And I'll give you the link for that as well, obviously. But there's, there's a tremendous movement, it seems, in the world today to globalize government. And as I talked about yesterday, that's the worst form of government possible because they have the least accountability. They don't answer to anybody, not even to the states. And certainly not to you and I. The next article I have is The War on Working Class Americans. How could these two books be so far apart? This article is by Richard Allen. It's on Substack. And you see the titles or the, or the uh, uh, covers of the books. <laughs> White Rural Rage, The Threat to American <laughs> Democracy and Second Class. <clears throat> How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Class and Men and Women. In the 2016 election, there was an honest moment displayed by a completely woke, Kool-Aid-drinking Democrat, none other than movie maker Michael Moore. Here's a brief snippet of what he said. Trump is saying the things to people who are hurting, and said Moore, and it's why every beaten down, nameless, forgotten working stiff who used to be a part of what was called the middle class loves Trump. He is the human Molotov cocktail that they've been waiting for, the human hand grenade that they can legally throw into the system that stole their lives from them. And on November 8th, Election Day, although they've lost their jobs, although, they, they, although they've been foreclosed on by the bank, next came the divorce, and now the wife and kids are gone, the car has been repoed, they haven't had a real vacation in years, they're stuck with the crappy Obamacare bronze plan where you can't even get a Percocet. They have essentially lost everything they've had, he continued, except one thing, the one thing that doesn't cost them a cent and is guaranteed to them by the American Constitution, the right to vote. And the author of the book Second Class is Batya Ungar Sargon. She was a Democrat. I don't know if she still is. <clears throat> but she uh, did some traveling across the country talking to people to find out what was going on. <clears throat> and uh, this is what she had to say. The Uniparty, it, uh, 
the uniparty, no real difference between Republicans and Democrats, in Washington, D.C. doesn't give a rip about the working man or woman in America. The person who said that was Batya Angar Sagan, a Democratic congresswoman from Brooklyn. She appeared on Steve Bannon's War Room broadcast on Rumble and spoke honestly about Trump's support among the working class. Most of her comments reflect the contents of her recent book, Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. And they give an excerpt. I'm just going to read a brief part of it. What I did for this book is I traveled around the country and interviewed working class Americans. And let me tell you something, Steve, and you know this. Working class Americans, whether they vote for Democrat or Republican, whether they're liberal or conservative, they all have the same views. Like neither party is really speaking to them. They all agree by and large about the most important issues. Polarization is a totally elite phenomenon. I thought that was very interesting that she wrote that. Again, I'll put the link in the description so you can read the article for yourself if you want to. And the last article I have, I'm just going to read the, the headline because that's all you re really need to know. AstraZeneca admits its COVID vaccine can cause rare side effect in court documents for the first time. AstraZeneca is being sued because it turns out that their vaccine can cause a, a rare and really strange combination of symptoms in, in a human being. It can cause both blood clotting and, uh, I guess you call it thin blood. A loss of platelets which causes bleeding so you can both bleed and clot from this vaccine now the thing that bugs me is <clears throat> when the, when we were being pounded with this stuff during the COVID-19 uh, crisis we were being told but the, the vaccines were both effective and safe well, it didn't take long to find out they weren't affected because people who were vaccinated were getting infected. So they clearly were not effective. Now we're finding out they also weren't safe. So we were, we were sold a bill of goods from the word go. <clears throat> and this is worldwide, by the way. This is not just in America. This is all over the world. This particular lawsuit happens to be in Britain, but there's another one going on in, in Italy. And there's more research being done, and all the research is telling us this was a really bad idea. Now, here's the sad part about the British lawsuit. <clears throat> when COVID was going on and they were pushing for the vaccines, the government of Britain legally indemnified AstraZeneca. So even if they lose the lawsuit, guess who gets to pay the, the plaintiffs in the suit? You do. The taxpayer does. It comes out of the British Treasury. AstraZeneca won't lose a penny. You tell me that's right. Tell me that that is right. You can't because it's not. Well, I pray for you. I pray that you will live an abundant life and that you'll live a long time, that you'll be healthy and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same thing for everyone that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.